as Gary mentioned, I'm a biologist. I'm mainly concerned in the identification of a fungal plant disease called powdery mildew. However, I think he failed to mention the fact that I'm also a real fun guy. So, <laughs> you're in for a treat tonight. The powdery mildews appear as a white token powder-like coating on the surface of thousands of plants worldwide. It grows on the leaves, shoots, buds and fruits of some of our most important plants and saps out the energy or the nutrients from them. So yields of some really important crops are greatly reduced. It grows on stuff like grains such as wheat and barley and soft fruits like apples, pears, peaches and plums. These different powdery mildews like, occur on different plant species. So if we're able to identify them, this could certainly help in control methods, targeting against certain species. This issue of species identification is one which is really important in many aspects of science, especially in biology. If we can tell or identify a specimen time after time, we can track its rise and fall and see if it's thriving or perhaps declining and needs our help. We can also see if there are new species coming into an area or if maybe one that was here yesterday is no longer here today. Over here, I have two beautiful looking mushrooms. Perhaps you'd like to have them in a stew or fried on toast. This one certainly would go well in your stew, but this one is in fact poisonous. This is something that catches out many fungal experts when like foraging in the forest for mushrooms to eat. It's minute differences that tell us the difference between something that's poisonous and something which would go beautifully on your toast. How about you, sir? Do you think you could tell the difference between these two? Yeah, I'd go for... Which one do you think is poisonous? I'd go for that one. I'd eat that one. That's poisonous. You think so? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it seems we've got an expert in the audience tonight. <laughs> that's two years of my PhD doing that. Well, one fungus that you certainly couldn't identify is one that has recently invaded the UK. This is the cause of ash dieback, something which has changed the whole landscape around us, so that now many ash trees have been killed by it. The problem comes in the fact that this cause of ash dieback looks superficially identical to one that has existed and coexisted with the ash tree in the, in the UK for hundreds of years. Fortunately, Scientists such as myself can look below the surface at the DNA, the makeup of these two different fungi. Here, we can now tell 100% of the time the difference in the DNA between them and now know if one fungus is going to happily exist with the ash tree or if it's going to destroy it. Now, if I could invite on stage my trees, please. Come on. Here. I have an apple tree. Anyone fancy an apple? Picked fresh. <laughs> and a pear. Anyone for a pear from a pear tree? <laughs> Unfortunately, though, powdery mildew is distributed in the air around us and on the wind. So, <laughs> apple tree, I'm afraid. <laughs> You are now infected with powdery mildew. And pear tree, you know what's coming. <laughs> you are now also infected with powdery mildew. Here, it's easy enough to tell the difference. The silver powdery mildew and the blue one. Unfortunately, some, nature does not come with such easily readable labels. So, how can we tell the difference? Well, 150 years ago, the only method was by identifying the plant itself. Some powdery mildews are highly specialised and can only grow on a certain plant, but others are much more general. They can grow on a wide array of different plants. We must therefore look at the morphology or the appearance of the fungus itself. Like you or I, the fungi have different appendages, different shapes and sizes, 
and different shapes, sizes, and number of spores that they produce. So we can look at these minute features under the microscope. This can help to limit from the hundreds of different powdery mildew species, maybe down to just 10 or a handful. However, the, the issue comes in the fact that the very closely related powdery mildews often look identical. Fortunately, everything around us in nature is made up of the most basic building blocks of life. Here, for example, with our powdery mildew infected apple, this one not so tasty, but it serves a purpose. We can easily, or not so easily, extract the DNA. Now this one is infected with two different species of powdery mildew. And then looking at the DNA like this, we can see minute differences. Can you tell the difference between these two? Yeah. Yeah, blue on the right. yeah so just a single change, like that blue one. Yeah, get rid of that. That blue one can, just a single change like that in the DNA chain, can make for huge differences on the surface. And perhaps this one can now infect a new host plant. This is what my project really aims to do to build up a database or library of many different powdery mildew species, and then in future, easily, accurately, and efficiently be able to identify them. This can probably help when screening plants for import and export to stop like, new harmful pow powdery mildew species from entering our country by quarantining and destroying the plant. So, all that's left for me to say is thanks to my trees, I'm going to find a cure for you soon. Thank you to all of you, and thank you, Mr. Expert, as well. Good night.